Laura Tuna here and what we're looking at is my Christmas Dia Perfect Partners dies and stamp. Um, biggest, biggest dies I've done so far with matching stamps and so um, I love this card. This was created by one of my design team members. This is Nicole's card and I just love this. Um, this was the, uh, the idea behind the inspiration was that we could create cards diorama cards and um, it doesn't have to be diorama but cards that you can look through you're creating a scene you're telling your own story there's components that mix and match but not a ridiculous number but if you use them wisely we can make it look like you've used a lot more so the purpose of this video isn't gonna we're not gonna make a complete card I'm gonna give you some inspiration like this or indeed like this here so when we said it doesn't have to be full-on 3d diorama I think this looks really cool. So this was inspired by a card by Donna. So um, you can see now this was um, it, 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 it's raised. It's got some um, some depth to it, but it's not nowhere near as deep as the one that we just looked at. But you've got all this component where the stamps and the dies and the embossing uh, embossed areas all work really well for you. The main thing I want to show you though is how to match up the stamped image with the die and um i know like i say we're, we're going to look through and give you a little bit of um a little bit of inspiration as we go along as well so what i've done is i have cut and embossed this um this huge die here now this is going to be bigger because remember the outside doesn't have a cut line i've just happened to cut the card down to that size so um but i have run it through the machine twice i've to cut it and also to emboss it now it might be difficult for you to see the embossed detail at the minute but what i'm going to do is use some distressing uh, chip sapphire and a little bit of cut and dry foam now i'm saying chip sapphire it does have a little touch of maybe a brownie color on here but that's okay because it'll just mellow it out a little bit so if i'm going really really lightly really really lightly because chip sapphire is really strong one of the darkest but well, i think it might be the darkest blue um so I'm going, what I'm trying to do is catch the edge of these trees but not go too far in and I don't want to, to um, crumple, crumple up my little deer there, it's quite dear. I'm just going across this very very gently but you can see, so thing is doing two things, it's preparing my cord for stamping which I'm going to show you in a sec and it's tying in the white cord, the area that isn't going to be stamped to the bit that will be stamped which is the deer um, but it's also letting you see how even without the stamp, you're going to have a fabulous card. You can you can work with this without, you know, sometimes you might want to add the stamp there, sometimes you might not. This looks really nice with black card and um, gilding wax. So, um, for another look, Point Beam, when I designed this range, uh, any of the Perfect Partners range, my mission is to make them look amazing when the stamps and the dies come together, but also make both the stamps and the dies work alone. So they're quite happy to go on, you know, do their thing. Oops, that's not what you want there. Right, try not to try not to crumple it up like that. That's not that's okay though. We haven't creased it. It's fine. We can we can manage with that. But just be careful that that doesn't happen. And um, I'm not going to push. I'm not going to do too much there. I can I can mess on with that a bit later. What I can what I do want to do is I want to show you how to stamp this deer. Now this is the stamp here. So you can see the stamp sets, the A5 stamp sets. There's loads of stamps on with, as well as the um, stamps that match up with a die. Now, um, again, I was trying to be a bit smart with giving you value for money. And what I've done, what you've got here is just a standalone deer that works as a stamp. That's a great stamp. You can use that time and time again. But it actually is the exact size it needs to be to go over that little blokey there. Now, doing that's never going to work for you. Doing the stamp and then the um, target practice, not going to work for you because there's not enough edge to, to match it up. But what will work for you, hopefully, well, it has every time for me, but you know what, when we're filming, um, is um, is to pop the stamp down like that and ink it up and then pop this on top of that. Now, the reason it's going to work is because I've designed these to be exactly the right size edge to edge. So by that, it doesn't have a halo around it. It doesn't... I haven't given you wiggle room with the dies um, because I didn't want that. I didn't want a halo around it because that, that wouldn't look natural to me. So I wanted them exactly the right size, which means you can literally just, if you silhouette the stamp with the die cut, it should all work nicely. That's the plan. Now, get that position before you do the next bit, which is the inking. Now I'm using Chip Sapphire, which is a dark, quite strong colour, distressing. Yeah, a little noise in the background. It'll be one of the horrible little Springer Spaniels I have. Probably Ginny. 
Yep, she's wanting she, that. Um, she's actually trying to get my cameraman's attention. She's the other half because she thinks it's time to throw a tennis ball. She's thinking wrong, but she's not giving up. <laughs> she could see the look. <laughs> just doing the the main the main trick, the the dog Jedi main trick. <laughs> I have a feeling she might get a bit more vocal as we go on, but we'll just ignore her and pretend it's not happening. So can you see how I just looked at the head there, focused on getting that right, then nudged it, tweaked it a tiny little bit to get its little spindly skinny little legs in, in the right place, press down, and then see what we've got. Now, if we lift that up, yeah, I'm happy with that. See all the stamp, the ink detail on there now? So what you can do, because it's distressing, you can then take your ink and you can blend it so... When you're creating, when you're drawing stamps, the, um, you've really got a couple of options on shading. It's either cross hatching, which I do, which is a series of lines, single lines or lines that kind of cross each other, hence the clue there, cross hatching, or dots. Now, dots, tried it. Oof. Yeah, you think I'm a little bit on the quirky side now? Yeah. Uh, um, best, best I don't do any more dotty ones, that's all I'm saying. So, um, but what you, what you can do with distress inks is blend the lines in so they look less like a stamp and more like a little bit of the you know a bit of artwork that you've just happened to sketch there but it's still you've got that extra detail in the stamp now I really like that because that's blended in really nicely into the background but it's got the extra impact and extra detail that you want that's how to line up your stamp with your with your die that's the main mission for this video this little video um but obviously i want to give you a bit more inspiration as well um if you look at this card here can you see how um it's got that really pretty silver edge to it all you're going to do is cut out another layer with mirror card i've got a bit of glitter card here which is fabulous um and what you do then is when you've lined them up you have them a little bit offset so seriously and so that trying to do this upside down with the deer that's not cooperating and can you see how now you've got that little glittery edge to it lots of little things hints and tips you can do little techniques like that looks really cool like i was saying earlier without without the um the, the stamp it looks really cool so i've got a little card i've started here so there's a pretty satin blue background this is another one of my um set um dies that come in this set it creates a really nice little church trees and a, a bear tree there and it's all i've got it all color coordinated here so i think that looks really cool very contemporary so from traditional to a totally contemporary looking card without the stamp just the dies i think that'll look fabulous just 3 d yeah another again another little bit of inspiration for you what i want to show you quickly is um is an, another little um, part of the the, um, the collection, which are the trees and the background. So you see this background here. This has all been created using one of the uh, stamps that is also a stamp for the the trees. Right, mine sound like what you're talking about. That's a background I've created in the brown tones. Right, so you see this big tree stamp here. It's been used a couple of times. Just um, a little bit offset and a bit down to make it look like you've got layers. I've used a bit of distress ink to give the impression of like banks of snow and things. Um, it's a big stamp, like that's the size of the stamp. So it's a fabulous stamp in its own right. However, it's also the exact size, these three trees here are the exact size of this die, which is also part of the range. So I'm being clever here. So what I could have done is on your stamp sheet, just give me a little cluster of three trees. And that would have been a nice little stamp. But I thought, why not give it context? Why not put some hills and some distant trees in there? And so that you've got more value for money. You've, you've got a stamp that works as a fantastic big background stamp, which I'm going to show you just quickly how I would work with that. But you've also got this exact right size stamp that you'd need to stamp up these trees in exactly the same way as you've just seen me. So you would take that off the rocker block, pop it on your mat, just as, exactly as I've done, take your um, die cut, ink it and press it down and then you've got your gorgeous little cluster of trees there a little bit of bling on them that looks look really cool so you could see that would have matched really nicely in this background somewhere I'll have to be further back it would look really pretty in there but I would have put that in before I pop the front on because it's all about getting the perspective depending on the positioning so um, I'll quickly show you what I did to create that background 
Um, so I've got some Sheena stamping cord here. I have my um, trees here and I am going to ink them up and then go ahead and now this is where um, I'm trying to do this so you can see if I was doing it so I could work with it better I would be have it much closer to me not as far away so I'm just going to stamp that image there and you can see you've got that cluster of trees now to make it look like I've got more going on you'd buy use but use the same stamp I'm going to ink this up this dog is really trying <laughs> it's, in, it's the cameraman she's intimidating not me phew because I'll just give into the pressure she knows I'm a pushover yeah oh god she's moved over to me I can feel her eyes beside me it's terrifying so right so we've got that there yeah so we've got now it looks like you've got some perspective but to make it look like um, you know you really want to enhance that um, use the ink that you've got on there that's still a bit wet and you can start dragging it down now you can see I've already got shading under there where there's not going to be much light so you can go ahead and just drag that down and, and continue that you see I've got a suggestion of a little line there that you could continue and make it look like a bank and the same here. Ginny, I'm not throwing the ball. Live with it. I'm saying that, you know, as soon as I've finished doing this. Guess what I'll be doing? <sighs> Probably just about all night. Now if you want to add a bit more depth to that colour, um, you see I've taken the distress ink there and I've splodged it on my craft mat. Never take a wet brush to your distress ink because You'll dilute your ink. You want to keep that ink nice and um, in its original concentrated state for when you're stamping. So even if you sneak up on it towards the side, some people have seen people do that thinking if they sneak up at the side of it, it'll not matter. Um, it knows. It does. So just go ahead and continue. You can take these little bits further. You see, just don't talk about the whole thing. You want to have little, um, it looks like it's a bit paler in the background. and But you can see how I'm recreating that illusion of it being... Um, hills and, and softening the lines and bringing the perspective a little bit further forward by just adding more stronger colour in the foreground it will make it look like you've got more going on in the front see just little really bumpy bits and it looks like well it's a nice little snowy kind of terrain and you can just that's how you're going to continue there now when you're colouring in the trees you'll see that um, they've got snow on them so best way I think is to blend the leafy bits a bit with a bit of water not too much and then it makes them solid but try to avoid the white bits and then it looks like it's naturally got bits of snow on it oh fabulous now we've got the cat wants the attention welcome to Douglas Towers everybody we're just here to do their bidding lovely <laughs> seriously yeah there you go that'll be Harry now so you've heard Ginny um, and and that's Harry, usually demanding food. So between throwing the tennis ball for Ginny, feeding Harry, um, little Ron will be somewhere. She just kind of like likes to go out and visit with the neighbour. She's got lots of friends and she'll get in that car. She, she doesn't care. I think she thinks anybody's a better bet than we are. <laughs> so, can you see how that's coming together there? Um, that's how you would continue. Now, um, I just think that looks really pretty like that. You could leave it like that. You really don't need too much more. And then if you want, you know, you could yeah, your jay is gonna come over the front like this. Even the silver one would look cool. Um where's the one I just colored? Where did that go? There it is. See how now you've got a little the nice 3D scene. I'm gonna take you on forward a little bit to show you this one again. Now, so what I did here was I cut out a circle of paper. Stick and sprayed it down so it'll be positionable and I used some cut and dry foam with the chipped sapphire to go over it, remove the, the paper and then I've got a moon. And um, what I'd used was a little bit of the um, aqua blend pencils to tint a little bit of green on the trees. But um, you can kind of, you know, do or don't, it's your choice. Hiccups now, your choice. Hopefully that's given you some inspiration, some ideas of um, how you can play with that. Oh, quickly want to show you this, I love what Nicole's done. Um, she's actually cut the deer out twice. 
and she's snipped one of them away from the frame and she's cut the little antlers off and now it's like a Mr and Mrs Deer. How cute is that? Off for a forest stroll. Not gorgeous? I want to be there. So there you go. I thank you.